This conference will now be recorded. Great. Thank you all very much. Um, so, Governance Committee, RTD Accountability. Let me just mention, but before we get started, um, myself, Ron, and Matthew had a, had a call yesterday just to kind of, um, you know, divide and conquer with all the various subcommittees and our regular full committee and all that like. Um, so we've we're, we've we've decided to kind of split out our, um, um, you know, who's going to be the lead staff person on each committee. So um, Matthew's going to be the lead staff on operations. Ron is going to be lead staff on on uh, finance, and I'm going to be lead staff on governance. So it's already the best committee. Just so <laughs> you all know. Uh, I like it. Uh, and so I, I actually, you know, be honest with you, I had a personal interest in this. When I was in Oklahoma City, um, we started up a regional uh, a transit dialogue down there, and it was actually called Regional Transit Dialogue, or RTD. I swear to God, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Um, we didn't even realize at the time, but uh, but as a result, I've done a, quite a bit of research on the governance side, and um, it just seemed like a like a good fit for me. So. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. So with that said, um, our really our only agenda item today is kind of um, trying to get down on paper exactly what the tasks of this committee might be. And, and as you see, we already have a start on that staff put together based on the, the, uh, the scope that was um, that was used to initiate this, this um, the RTD Accountability Committee. We kind of put those in, into various columns and I know you've seen this all before. So we just wanted to go through the governance subcommittee task and make sure that you guys feel comfortable with that. And then at the end, if we could prioritize where we want to start, basically. And with an understanding that we really have just one member of the of the actual committee uh, present, but of course, um, I'm, I'm sure Elise and, and Lynn are, uh, will weigh in and, and their thoughts are welcome, of course. So with that said, um, Matthew has the... Uh, the subcommittee task up on his screen and the governance. I'll start with the first one. It just might go down through and just if you have any comments, please just shout out. Um, so the first is districts partnerships with local governments. Uh, and on this one, um, I was actually, I don't know Lynn or or any RTD staff that might be on here. Have there been any any surveys that have been done with local governments, just kind of satisfaction type surveys or anything like that that you're aware of? Um, Barbara would have longer history. There's nothing that's coming to mind for me. Okay. Barbara, are you there? Maybe she stepped away. Yeah. Good question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm I'm multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Barbara. I, I asked if, if there had ever been any surveys done, just kind of satisfaction surveys that were sent out to local governments within the district or anything like that. Are you aware uh, of any? No, but I can I can double I can double check on that. Um, okay, just curious. Yeah, I, I will double check on that. I know there's been some internal stuff that we've done, but I don't know about external in my tenure, and that's been a little over 10 years now. Um, but I'll double check and get that back to the committee. But as a local government I, person, I can weigh in that um, this is perhaps one of the biggest issues for communities, um, not feeling like there's a true partnership with RTD. You know, as much as we love RTD and all that, setting that aside, um, and it crops up in everything, particularly every year when there's discussions about adjustments to the service, particularly service cuts, um, RTD hand, makes the decision, hands it to us and says, what do you think? Never mind, we're doing it anyway, is how it feels, as opposed to actually, that's probably a little bit harsh, but that really does is how it feels and um as opposed to recrafting the partnership where local governments are consulted with on their piece of the transit system and in the notes i sent matthew and i, I care and perhaps others on this uh, the the depth of exploration i'd like to see under this bullet is and I don't know if Doug, you can you can imagine me saying this, but whether or not uh, we we would even look at setting up something like the Dr. Cog sub regional tip forum process, 
um, where there's community base for those of you who don't sit on Dr. Cog, where basically at the county level, the county and its municipalities sit together, and RTDs and you know CDOT and others are involved, but and do community-based transit planning um, to okay. figure out their local transit network and how it can partner up with the regional RTD transit network and consider revenue sharing so that a portion of RTD funds flow directly to these local sub-regional forums and to look at mm -hmm. you know potential sharing of dollars and um, planning authority with RTD and local the local communities that it serves. Mm -hmm. So I know I don't know what your experience is, Julie, but that's certainly been ours up here. Of some, it is something very like. similar. Yeah, I think Elise, you you hit it right on the head there, and um, I feel like there it hasn't been a lot of cooperation or coordination with local governments. It's essentially, you know, we get handed down what RTD is going to do, and we just deal with it. I guess um, there's not really that much of a dialogue that happens um, unless it's like a forced intervention type dialogue. Um, so I, I really like Elisa's idea. I think something like that could be really helpful. One of the reasons why I think it could also be helpful as well is specifically for my area and my county is you get to hear conversations where we have to fill in the gaps, where we don't have service above 120th. So we're making up our own transit decisions up there. So, I mean, like things like that is, is it's a really important conversation of how communities are trying to stitch together their own transportation programs when RTD is nowhere to be seen. So, I mean, I, those conversations would be, I, I hope, very enlightening to RTD as well. Um, and I know they happen through various avenues of some people kind of keeping others in the loop, but there's no really formal process to it. Um, we also did invite RTD to our city council meeting, so we we try to get them to come and, um, and visit us at least every couple of years or something like that, um, just so that they could tell the entire council about what's going on transit wise. Um, and so I felt like that could be really helpful as well. Um, just how are you communicating and, and working in conjunction with local government and then how is that information trickling down right to our residents so it feels like it's a system of people who, who you know the communication flows versus just this kind of disjointed um mess because a lot of a lot of locals don't have a, an understanding of what's going on and um not unless you're participating in you know dr cog and all of the transportation committees that are local to you um it's it's tough to kind of get a sense of what's actually happening in your community and what's coming. I would add that I think that this is one area in particular where we might want to look at some models of peer agency, transit agencies around the country, um, where there are sort of better um, partnerships that's are, that are inherent in the structure and the funding um, frameworks where um, the the regional transit agency is actually part of their mission is to foster and support local transit networks um, mm -hmm. rather which is not the case now but anyway so i think we don't need to necessarily start from scratch and um, hopefully we can get some of that information and, and be guided by what others are doing uh, doug i was your question about uh, the survey the, though there hasn't been a survey that we know of of local governments, this has been a big theme at um, uh, the committee, the larger policy committee at Reimagine is, you know, let's, let's figure out a better way to work with our local government. So um, I think it's a, a timely conversation. Yes, indeed, Lynn. Yeah, I think, you know, as part of this task, um, you know, just to have some foundational data would be, would, would I, I would throw it out there that maybe um, us, Dr. Cox staff, can can do some short survey to to local government so that we have have an understanding of where we are. Just a thought. Sure. Well, and maybe could you include in that survey ideas of what would work well, what would oh, work better? Sure. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that would be actually really interesting, um, just to get a sense of what everyone is is 
thinking their different perceptions of, of what's what they know and how they experience um, that RTD communication. So yeah, that would be actually great. Yeah, and I think it would be. A great place um, to start. I think it would be a pretty good product for the new new GM coming in too. I think she'd be be very very interested yeah. to have some of that foundational data. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. This is Barbara McManus. I, I I'm not seeing where I can raise my hand here, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but um, one uh, we'll be we'll be doing takeaways from each of these committees and getting a lot of the questions uh, answered as we move forward. But I just know off the top of my head that um, we have. Uh, we, we use .gov and there are thousands and thousands of entities on that that we forward information to, our press releases, so on and so forth. We also have TMAs and TMOs that we work with. We have the Metro Mayor's uh, meeting that happens on a regular basis, um, as well as, um, you know, sub, uh, sub areas such as uh, solutions us 36 um, and things like that but I will work with our communications department and get a full list of what that looks like now just as a starting point yeah that'd be helpful thank you thank you um, anybody have any other comments on the on the first one I think we all believe that that's an important task of this committee and and the RTD sub or, sorry the RTD accountability committee in totality Okay, awesome. um, the second bullet, I'm sorry, I got to enlarge, enlarge my screen a little bit here, um, is organizational assessment. And then in parens, we have human resources, work culture, management, and governance of the district, organizational and board structure. Um, any yeah. comments, suggestions on this one? Agreement? Agree, that's a pretty big yeah, it is. overarching. So I assume under organizational and board structure, I, I know some people want us to look at, say the size of the board um, and how it works. And I assume that's all encompassed in that along with, well, kind of everything except for the financial health, which I guess got um, um, sent over to moves. the finance subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, I thought, you know, the organizational and board structure, that additional language that was put in there was covered already under governance of the district. But if it, but if, you know, if, if people would like to see more, more detail, I think that's fine too. I think I it's, a, I think it's fine. Um, the way uh, you have it listed here, one just kind of question off the top of my head is how are those districts um, mapped and does that change with the census coming up or is that just an internal mapping process? Does anyone know? I'm curious. That might be something we're gonna look at. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's a very good question. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's Ron. anybody in there. Oh, Ron, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, sorry. I, looking at this again, I know the the operations subcommittee and the finance subcommittee have a lot on their plate as well. I'm, you know, looking at this in terms of human resources and work culture, um, whether that is a is kind of a governance subcommittee issue or if those fit under either finance or operations. So well, it did I, seem I think, like operations. Um, oh. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, Daya's email uh, speaks to this. So I, I wanted to just read one paragraph from her email uh, that she wanted to um, uh, bring to the, to the committee if she was able to make it today. She said, one item I do want to mention in terms of the role of the governance group is that we should certainly focus on the composition of staff, specifically administration and management ratio to the junior staff. This was discussed in depth during the board study session, and I believe uh, dedicated time and analysis will be critical moving forward. So that certainly speaks mm -hmm. to that um, that work culture and and um, uh, organizational assessment piece. Okay. So when it comes to kind of workforce issues, how is 
how are the other two subcommittees kind of overlapping in that area and how can we be distinct and focus on something that's very specific? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. See, workforce retention, hiring, and man, yeah, is in operations. And I think a lot of that in the operations committee was focused on sort of the issue with um, um, uh, the driver shortage and how mm -hmm. that needs to be solved in a post-COVID world so we don't get back to that place. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, recruiting, having the new drivers have to work mandatory, you know, sixth day, you know, that kind of thing. So that felt operational um so it was that piece and then the finance committee had to deal with sort of the finances of of the workforce right the um just so you i don't know if you know anything about the current state audit it won't really be ready until there may be like a, a draft that's public or something before the end of the year but it's it's roughly december but there's i think they're focusing on those workforce issues which I don't know if that's if they're changing that focus, you know, since the workforce issues have changed so much. Um, but just so you know, that's what's the state audit that's going on right now. They're they're doing a lot of work on that. So, Lynn, this is, Ron, I've got a question for you. Maybe how many how many of the staff at at RTD are directly appointed by the board? Is it just the GM, or are there others? It's just the GM. There's been discussion about the uh, uh, general counsel, but that she's not appointed by the board. So okay. we hire the general manager. Thank you. So I, I have a I have an addition to that. This is Barbara McManus. So I also report directly to the board, but I am not an appointed or contract employee. But I report directly to the board, as does the general manager. And just the, the um, that's right, the the uh, conversation last night that Day is referring to um, was around uh, the layoff numbers and that the unrepresented um, layoffs would be about 108 is the current, the current estimate of full-time and part-time, which is 13% of the total. And the layoff numbers for, for uh, represented, which is operators, mechanics, cleaning, those sorts of things. 429 which is about 20 percent of the total and there was some discussion on the uh on the board as to whether those numbers should be somewhat closer it was didn't didn't uh, reach a conclusion it was a study session but just so you understand what they is referring to okay oh, i see Great. thank you very much um i so i want to make sure that that julie's question was adequately addressed um and I think she's right. We want to make sure we're not being duplicative across the, the various committees. Um, Julia, so I think in the, where are my, cur oh, you can't see my cursor. <laughs> the, um, under this second bullet, the, you know, that last two lines there where it says organiz organizational and board structure, I mean, talking about referring to the governance of the district. I think yeah. the organizational probably provides, um, you know, enough detail to suggest what, Dale was suggesting in her email, you know, if that makes any sense. That it, it provides right. an, enough latitude for this governance subcommittee to, to have conversations about what Dale is, was suggesting. Yep, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I- One I, other, go ahead. Go ahead, Elise. I just wanna say one other item that I thought fit under governance, and I don't know if it fits under um, where it fits under the bullets that are currently on the list, but the relationship with RTD with transit agencies and communities outside its current district boundaries. Um, and the example that we always bring up in my neck of the woods is the flex route that comes from Fort Collins um, uh, down south, it goes through Longmont, ends up in Boulder. It's a really important route and we've, Again, don't want to overstate it, but it sort of feels like we had to drag RTD kicking and screaming to participate in that route. And it's a really important, successful route. Um, but there's good, there's going to be other examples where we need RTD to participate. For example, the, the mobility hub on I-25. 
ideally state the state highway 119 bus rapid transit will connect from longmont all the way over to i-25 to that mobility hub but it, it requires going outside the rtd district so how do we facilitate mm -hmm. partnerships um, outside the boundaries um, is i think going to be a key piece of having um, RTD understand its role in a broader statewide transportation transit system, which I think is increasingly important as say CDOT does more work with bus staying. We want a cohesive system and we want to figure out how, how to make it work for RTD. And they, right now the system isn't set up to facilitate that. So Hello, I don't know Matthew. what bullet that falls under, but I would like to see us address it somewhere. So, Lise, um, Matt was typing as you were talking. Um, in the first bullet, he put some some language in there. Let's have a look at that real quick. And I think that's great. Could we just also say parenthetically, including outside RTD boundaries? Because I think you're right, both inside and outside, we want more collaboration. Yeah. Very good. That makes sense to include it, I think, up there. So thanks for that. Yeah. Hey, um, just an earlier uh, question that Julie had with regards to the, the the mapping and the boundaries. There was a message in chat, Miller Hudson put in here that yes, the the oh. boundaries are redrawn every ten years. So I assume, assume Miller, oh. that that um, that aligns with the census. That's correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions on, on bullet number two or one? Uh, just one additional thought on the second bullet. Uh, since it was the governor and the legislature that uh, created this committee, and since it's the legislature that created RTD, wondering if if under this bullet also includes um, how uh, board uh, RTD board members are elected or selected um, because there are different models around the country where they're appointed or elected. Uh, I don't know if, if, if we want to include that, un assume that that's included under this bullet or um, explicitly pointed out under the bullet. Yeah, I, I mean, Matthew, personally, I think it's covered in that bullet, to be honest. Yeah, bullet two is very broad. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. so, I mean, there's a lot you can kind of throw under that governance of the district. Right. Um, especially like board structure. And I'm assuming, you know, anything board related could fall into there. Um, right. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can do it. The operations, well, both operations and finance had additional detail that we didn't try the to jam into this matrix but that we kept sort of we didn't want to lose and so doug as you're oh, running sure. the subcommittee keep the running list of the details underneath these bullets in terms of all of the potential topics that we might want to take a look at if you yep. could include some of that detail so it's not lost and the subcommittee can keep working mm -hmm. on it going forward definitely so yeah i'll keep notes right here so we'll we'll, right, we'll, uh, we'll memorialize that in a, in a document after um, okay, so the third district, or sorry, the third third bullet here is district's role in fostering economic development. We have a th thought on that. Um, any questions, concerns okay, about think, that bullet? Go ahead, do it. I think it's a great idea to um, include this because as we're as we're thinking about um, how some of, especially, you know, along the end line, our new stations have been opening up and, um, you know, there's a lot of thought and, and effort that goes around, you know, these, these stations opening, what is it going to do to the area? I mean, I think it's a huge opportunity for RTD to, again, really partner with locals um, and, and making, making the best product, if you will. Um, so, and that definitely includes economic development. So I'm excited that that bull is put on here. 
Could I add a, a few more comments? I guess, depending on what economic means, I assume that means also transit-oriented housing, um, which is a part of the economy, but it's a little more specific. Economic development sometimes implies commercial and retail, and I commercial. think we want to make sure that the housing component isn't lost in there. And then I would also flag that one of the additions under the finance subcommittee was to take a look at the statutes guiding RTD that create some limitations around revenue generation, among mm. other things. There's a there's a number of obstacles, but um, and some of that includes um, what RTD can do with its properties around stations. Right now, they're limited largely to parking. If that could be opened up, um, that that only creates more revenue, which is under finance, but it also hits directly at the economic development piece too. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'm just noting the overlap between those and um, whomever we task with doing sort of an analysis of RTD statutes um, might want to provide that information to both subcommittees. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, I was thinking at least that like um, doing kind of like a, like you were saying, an analysis of the, the statutes um, I felt like it did belong somewhere in the governance subcommittee, um, just because it, it feels like that would be a natural home for that. Um, and so, yeah, we would have to try and figure out how to coordinate between those two subcommittees because it is beneficial to both. And I do like your idea of adding the um, transit-oriented housing. Can we add that to maybe the third bullet? Because when I do think of economic development, I am thinking commercial. And so it's really important to call those out separately. Excellent. Matthew, can you can you make that change or addition? I think the statutes and the, the current um, status of those different topics, transfer and development, the contracts, uh, uh, fare box revenue, that's an area that, um, you know, maybe you'd get the two subcommittees together and, and uh, either, um, there's just a lot that's been done on that. It's sort of like basic factual stuff that would help you start. Jennifer Brandeberry, who's our public affairs person, has been working in the legislature for many years, might be a good person to do a presentation on that, or there are others, but um, uh -huh. you might find that helpful to have um, kind of a start. It would, it would shortcut your, your analysis work, I think. Good idea. Yeah, that's good idea. Very good. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Um, okay, we'll pretty this up later. I, I don't know if we need development in there a second time, Matthew, but we'll, uh, we can clean that up. Um, I, but to Julie's point, though, I think it does, uh, you know, the actual review of RTD statutes fits well under a task for, for the governance, and then we can share that with the other subcommittees. It seems the most appropriate with this committee. Yeah, Doug, Doug I agree. I think, I suspect that there are probably different pieces of statute that we might be able to di distribute to different parts of different subcommittees to kind of really dive into the issues related to those. Definitely. Okay, other thoughts? I know we're getting, it's 10.56. Um, we're planning on ending this meeting at 11. The, um, are there anything else, Elise or Julie that, or, or Lynn, that you'd like to see on this list? Um, I, you know, the last bullet and what I uh, put together in my thinking um, ha had to do with um, uh, two things. One, consider rebranding RTD via structural change, potentially even a name change to help build um, public trust, I, I, which I guess is my way of saying we should think big about RTD's relationships with everything from CDOT to local governments. And um, I, I think RTD's future sustainability is going to be it's going to require going back to the ballot for revenues at some point, and that's going to require building trust. So I just um, I guess want us to think big on this piece. And mm -hmm. um, it could be that we want to flag in the first bullet um, 
Matthew, you rewrote it really nicely to expand what kind of partnerships, but we may want to call out CDOT specifically. Again, to my point earlier about looking at the statewide mm -hmm. transit system and seeing how the regional entities um, uh, fit in with the state system and recognizing the, and also the local systems, um, it might be useful to, to add that as well. Sorry, that was a little bit far ranging, but. Yeah, very good. Yeah, and I, I'll agree with Elise, and especially if we do a survey of like local governments and things like that, that would be one of the key findings that you'll see come out is just the lack of trust that the community has with RTD. Um, and so that's just a reality and a hurdle that RTD is going to have to face moving forward. Um, and how, how to address that because it's, it's pretty severe at this point. Um, and so I, I think that does have to be a huge factor in how they're going to be able to be successful in the future is how to overcome that huge trust, that broken trust they have with the community. Very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I, I made a note on on the on the uh, RTD rebranding. I, I think that's an interesting, I uh, you know, concept. Um, so I'll make sure to include that on my list that I have here that we're, we're filling out. Great. And Via Mobility did a rebranding about a decade ago. Um, we may want to consider um, hearing from them on on how it went. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Hey, um, we're at 10:59. Um, if you have anything else, of course, listen, we're going to be meeting quite a bit through through the months. Um, so we're planning on meeting twice a month in addition to your full full committee meeting. Um, and I know Matthew is trying to set those up right now. And uh, we're, we're looking for standing meeting times and dates so so that it won't be a surprise and be difficult to find it on your calendars. But we will send calendar invites to make sure that um, that it's appropriately mm -hmm. shown on your calendar. Thank you. That's no, great. I think welcome. Matthew said we might be do doing a meeting next week, which isn't going to be in sync with the normal, which Correct. is great. We should. Could you send out those calendar invites ASAP? Because yes. I, I think we'll we'll need to work hard to make sure that the people have these on their schedules. No, definitely so. We'll get them out today, right, Matthew? Well, uh, I had I gave everyone till the end of the day to do the doodle poll. So I I was planning on sending out first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. But well, I, um, I guess either way, you, I mean, we can what, send it out. Can I the day make a today. suggestion? Because the date for next week is not going to be connected to the first and third or the or the second and no, fourth that point. you were asking about. So I would send out something today saying it's our intention to try to have the subcommittees meet next week. Here's our tentative proposal and or whatever. But I, they're not. It's not totally connected. Mm -hmm. to the That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's do that, man. Thanks, yep, guys. I gotta run. Okay. Great we'll conversation. See ya. All right. We'll talk yeah. next week. See y'all. Thanks.